Hello everybody, my name is Dimitri and today I'm going to tell you about transformations of cesium 4 with bromide 6 nanocrystals. So what is these transformations I'm going to talk about? Well, it's an interesting interconversion between non-emissive wide gap so-called zero dimensional metal halide nanocrystals uh, stimulated by uh, chemical reagents to emissive uh, lead halide perovskite nanocrystals. Uh, and such transformation has been used, for example, to produce um, perovskite-based uh, nanoheterostructures, uh, which is a very interesting uh, research direction. However, these chemistries uh, result in a very fast interconversion uh, between zero-dimensional and perovskite nanocrystals, so it's pretty much impossible or very difficult to capture intermediate and gain insight into their mechanism. So to, to circumvent this, we devised an approach that involves a mi much milder transforming agent, uh, PMAO. Um, and PMAO is a copolymer of uh, octadecene and maleic anhydride. And upon addition uh, of this copolymer to the dispersion of zero D nanocrystals, they interconvert into perovskite ones um, over several minutes or tens of minutes, depending on the reaction conditions. And that gave us a chance to actually capture them on the TM grid, put them into microscope, and see that reaction intermediates are uh, heterostructures composed of uh, domains of perovskite nanocrystals shaded here in green that grow over time on this um, zero D particles. And the chemistry involved in this interconversion consists of the uh, amine from the surface of nanocrystals reacting. Uh, with an anhydride ring through nucleophilic addition, which results in a ring opening and formation of maleamic acid. That, uh, and that acidification uh, promotes interconversion and we believe stabilizes the resulting uh, particles. So this maleamic acid fragment. So <clears throat> that allowed us to look at the optical properties of these heterostructures in a film together with the polymer. So while they were converting, we quickly drop cast them and then cool them down to 35 kelvins uh, and to measure excitation emission maps where we see presence of both uh, emission from the zero uh, dimensional fragment and uh, perovskite. So emission is dominated by the emission of the perovskite part. So then by analyzing uh, integrals of the emission spectra at different temperatures and excitation wavelength, we uh, discovered that there is evidence of energy transfer from uh, 0D to 3D part uh, in these um, particles, which is uh, quite interesting. So next, I mentioned that this interconversion is uh, sort of uh, proceeds over several minutes. So heterostructures are transient. So um, since we published this first paper, we made some advances and introduced additional surface modification that allowed us to obtain samples of heterostructures that seem to be stable for at least a few days. And um, it's shown here, their optical uh, properties. So there are two cuvettes, one with the partially transformed uh, zero D particles and another one with fully transformed. And they show quite respectable emission, uh, probably among the best uh, we measured in these heterostructures. So about 50% for heterostructures and about 75% uh, on fully transformed ones. Notice that here, cesium and bromide 3 uh, part is quantum confined because its emission falls uh, below 500 nanometers. So what else is this chemistry good for? Uh, well, it turns out that we can extend this um, amine anhydride reactivity concept to the um, silica coating. So, in that case, we replaced uh, copolymer with a small molecule and hydrate, and then took advantage of the acidification of the medium and added um, uh, tetralcoxicillanes. And uh, after optimizing reaction conditions, we were able to obtain samples consisting of metal halide cores capped with amorphous uh, silica shells. However, uh, these materials uh, demonstrate low PLQI and incomplete shell passivation which requires um, additional surface treatment to boost emission efficiency and uh, additional overcoating to improve their environmental stability. Uh, next, 
I want to change gears a little bit and talk about uh, actually starting 0D nanocrystals. So uh, in one case, we observed an interesting result when we were characterizing elemental composition of the starting cesium foil and bromide six particles, we saw that in a sample, uh, when we look at the nanocrystal monolayer uh, in transmission electron microscope, then we see that the composition is slightly cesium rich, which we attributed to the presence of cesium oleate on the surface. However, when we deposit the same sample in a thicker film and look at uh, the elemental composition of this thick, uh, uh, film um, in um, SEM, then we see that the composition is actually rich in uh, lead and bromide instead. So, um, and in some way, this is uh, not surprising when one looks at the stoichiometry of the synthesis of these nanocrystals. So, when you write down all the millimoles balance and uh, do subtractions, uh, you figure out that um, as a result of this synthesis, um, Assuming 100% yield, one should anticipate uh, free lead and bromide present. Uh, and since we see it in the elemental analysis, it suggests that even the purification of this crystal doesn't completely get rid of lead and bromide. So, and lead and bromide uh, complexes are quite sneaky and hard to detect. For example, uh, this work from Elivisata's group, uh, where Jacob Dahl and co workers um, measured spectra of the species. Uh, which are quite similar with the spectra of uh, zero D nanocrystals. So it's hard to tell it apart by optical absorption. In our attempt, we analyzed uh, spectra of isolated nanocrystals and supernatant that contains the species, uh, and then compared it with the spectra of lead bromide dissolved in just olelanine and a lead oleate produced from lead oxide and oleic acid. We didn't find a good match. However, when we dissolve with bromide in the mixture of oleolamine and oleic acid, this peak, uh, even though it's a slightly different wavelength, but shape-wise it matches the one observed in the supernatant, which led us uh, to propose that this lead bromide species are some mixed uh, lead uh, bromide oleate ones. And their presence has interesting consequences. Uh, for example, we conducted liquid cell electron microscopy study on these particles in tolium dispersion to test their resistance under electron beam. And what we saw in those experiments is that when we focus on the area where there are no zero D particles, after some seconds, we start to observe formation of rounded and even dendritic particles that by elemental composition turn out to be um, uh, metallic lead. Um, so what happens here is that this uh, excess of uh, lead species is being reduced uh, under electron beam and produces metal particles. Uh, here, I'd like to wrap up and uh, summarize some open questions. It's not an exhaustive list. So one of them is what exactly are the mechanisms involved in the conversion between these two phases? Is it just the role of acid or somehow this uh, excess of lead plays a role? Then what is the utility and properties of um, perovskite and zero-D nanoheterostructures. For example, the fact that there might be some lattice strain uh, next to the quantum confined domain of perovskite, does it have an effect on radiative lifetime on the exciton coherence lifetime? These are interesting questions to tackle experimentally. And then uh, towards the direction of material discovery, whether anhydrite amine chemistry is extendable to other halides. With that, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Jia Deng uh, for her help with high resolution electron microscopy and liquid cell experiments, Christian Rossi and Rosaria Brescia for their um, carrying out the um, silica shelling and characterizing um, those particles, uh, our collaborators from PISA, the group of Dario Pisignano, as well as Manda group at IIT in Genova. And um, this project uh, has been partially funded by the Marie Curie Fellowship and uh, uh, by the internal funds of IIT Nanochemistry Department. So with that, uh, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Okay.